Hi everyone, welcome once again to another tutorial session in bioinformatics. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can install HiSAT 2 by building from source. HiSAT 2 is a tool that is used for mapping RNA sequences to a reference genome. And so, if you want to read more about this tool, you can visit this page. I will leave the link to this page in the description box. Now, in order for you to follow this tutorial, you need to make sure you have a Linux platform and you also need to make sure you have GCC installed. So just make sure you have these requirements satisfied. Instructions for installing GCC can be found in the description box. So just um, use that. At the time of making this tutorial, what worked for me was GCC 9.3. So just use the version that works best for you. Okay, so let's proceed. So let's go to the GitHub page and then look at how to install HiSAT 2 by building from source. So and this is the instructions if you want to clone directly from GitHub, but we are going to modify this uh, instruction here. Okay, so uh, just take note of that. So let's go to the releases. I'll leave this link in the description box for you to also use. So here you look at the latest version, which is a 2.2.1. That is what we are going to download. So let's scroll down, let's get a zip file. I'll just right click and copy the link. So I'll just copy it because I want to download everything on the terminal. You can also click and download, but let's use the terminal. Uh, that is uh, much faster and more convenient. Okay, so we are on the terminal now. So on the terminal, I'll cd to my home directory first. And then I'll use widget to download the zip file. So I'll do that here. Okay, so I have it downloaded. So do an ls and you see the file there. Let's clear the screen and continue. The next thing I'll do is to extract the content of this file. So I'll say unzip and then I'll extract it. I'll specify the name like this and run. Okay, so it has been extracted. Let's clear the screen and continue. Let's do an ls and you see a directory here. So let's cd into that directory. Let's do an ls and then you have some files here. Let's clear the screen and continue. So we are going to use the make command. So I'll say make and then the source will be compiled and then you will finally get the binaries. So let's wait and then see how it goes. Okay, so the make command has been executed successfully. Let's clear the screen and continue. Okay, so let's do an ls. And you will see that some files have also been added. Let's clear the screen again. So now we can test HISA2. So we can say HISA2. And then the file will be executed for us. Perfect. Now the current setup, because we are in the directory where we built the source, we can always call HISA2 just with the name. Okay. But we want to also configure our system so that wherever we are um, on the system, we can just call HISA2 by the name and then also get it executed for us. So let's quickly look at how we do that. Let's proceed. So let's clear the screen first and then let's cd back. I just want to show you something. So let's cd back. Let's say we are cd back to the home directory. So with the current setup, if you call high side 2 like this, we are going to have an error. Okay, so this is what I want us to uh, fix. 
So what we are going to do is to add a part of Hyzer 2 to our environment so that we can always call it by the name here and then get it executed. And so to do that, we need to first create a directory. We are currently in the home directory. So I'll just create a directory called apps. So I'll say make the apps. And then I'm going to move the Hyzer 2 directory into this particular apps directory. So let's do an ls first. We are going to move this one here, this to this particular one here. So I'll say mvin dash vin, and then I'll specify the directory, and then I will move it here. After that, I want to also get the four parts of the binary. So I'll cd to apps slash hyzer two. So cd apps slash hyzer two, and then I'll issue the pwd command and then this path that has been displayed is what I will use so I will just make sure I have it copied and then I will cd back to my home directory so what I'm going to do is to modify the .bashrc file and then I will put this path in there but before I do that I need to make a copy of the .bashrc file it's just a backup so I will say cp dot bash ic and i'll say bash ic dot back this is just a copy so that in case anything happens i can use that to reverse the changes i made so i will now edit the dot bash ic file i will use nano but you can also use vi or any text editor so i'll say nano dot bash ic okay so i will scroll down Okay, and then I will add a path. So I'll say export path equals the path. I'll add a colon and then I will specify the path of the binaries. So this is it. And then I will save the changes. So I'll exit and then save the changes. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is to open a new terminal and then test HiSat2. Okay, so I have my new terminal open. So I'll just type HiSat2. And then I'll run it. Perfect. So now everything has been configured and it has been executed successfully. So this is how uh, we build from source to get HiSat2 installed on our Linux PC. So that's how we do it. So this is how I bring my tutorial to an end. And let me also say that you can also install Hyzer 2 by using binaries or uh, by uh, using some conda commands. So I've already made tutorials on that as well. So you can also watch those ones to also learn how to set up Hyzer 2. You can also watch my other tutorial on how to perform genome mapping using Hyzer 2. So just use the videos that have that have been displayed right now. You can also check those videos that have been listed in the description box and then learn more about high such too so that'll be all for this tutorial thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next session goodbye